Hi and welcome back to the Android video series. In this video we're going to talk about radio buttons and radio groups and how to control them. Now what I have here is three radio buttons and they are enclosed inside a radio group and I have no way to tell that by looking at the graphical interface. Also if we look over here we have a radio button control that we can do but even down in the composite area we don't really we don't have a radio group control that we can find so if you don't know uh, how do you know is the question in other words if you had just placed three radio buttons here and expected them to run exclusively uh, they wouldn't you would be able to select two of them at the same time or three all three of them at the same time so how do we fix it so that only one can be selected at any given time? Well, the answer is we wrap it in a radio group. We see our three radio buttons here. Radio button, RB1, RB2, and RB3. And then here's a radio group. And I've given it an ID. I've set its width and height to wrap content. And there's other things here too. And there's some, there's some formatting that you know, maybe I could do better, but this is just quick. But I've got a radio group here, and then I've also got a text view that just doesn't have a text attribute set. We're going to set the text depending on the selected button. I've also got three strings defined, and they're defined in strings XML. RB1 text, 2 text, and 3 text are set to 1, 2, and 3. And uh, so this is very much a piece of test code, but it does explore how to get the, uh, the, the the pertinent information that we want out of that radio group. What is that information? We want to know the identity, the ID of the radio button within that group that was clicked. Now, you may think, okay, well, that's easy enough. I can just look at the IDs, RB1, RB2, and RB3, and see which one is clicked. Well, there's, it turns out there's an even easier way to do this. And that is that we put an ID on the radio group itself. And then you say, well, that even, that makes it easier. All I have to do is get the selected ID and then write a switch statement uh, to see which of the radio button IDs is selected. You could do that. But it turns out there's an even easier way to do that because the radio group itself is going to give us the ID in a method. So now let's look at main activity and see what we're up against. First of all, the key here is to implement on checked change listener. And we must implement the correct one. We <laughs> there is another one that is for a grouped view or a grouped control, but the particular one we want to implement and the particular uh, import that we want is android.widget.radio group dot on checked change listener. So if we're using a radio group, we must import the correct one. So you can see here I've got widget.radio group imported and also Android widget dot radio group dot on checked change listener. Now notice the spelling on checked change. On checked change. Now if you implement this uh, this interface, then you must implement the unchecked changed public void method. Uh, this is the method of this interface. So watch the spelling. This is unchecked change. This is unchecked changed. So there's an extra D in this one. So now in the implementation of this, as I look back at my main activity, I find a text view. I find my text view and I find the radio button that is selected and that radio button that's selected is passed in to the onchecked change method in the second parameter. The first parameter is the group. We really don't need that. However, we might have in our interface more than one group and we want, want to distinguish which group we're dealing with. However, this one is the really important one. This is the ID of the radio button that was selected. Using this, I don't have to switch between these values. I can just use this ID to find view by ID to get the selected radio button. And here's that statement. 
I cast a radio button with find view by ID because we know this returns a view, not a radio button. And then I use the radio ID that is just passed in. This avoids having to use a switch or using a bunch of if, else, if, else, if. All we have to do is get that ID and find its view. And then I'm going to get a string from the selected radio button ID, get text to string. And then I'm just going to set the text in the text view to a format of whatever that string is plus selected period. And that's it. So let's look and see how it works. Remember that the key to using radio buttons is to wrap them in a radio group element. And remember also that this radio group element is not going to be visible in your, pal in your layout palette. You have to know about it. And this is why we covered this in a separate video. All right, so let's run it <coughs> and see how it works. So here's my application. I have one, two, and three. And when I select one, it changes the value of the text view because that method of the of the interface is being fired on checked changed. In other words, every time a, the checked state of the radio group itself, not any of the radio buttons, but the radio group itself is changed, that method will fire. And this is a very useful method for getting the state of a radio button. Typically, we would do something else with it, but this explores it fully and shows you that that state changes instantly. We don't have to pull it at a later, di at a later time unless we really want to. Thank you very much.